This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it! Hey there! Takano, having realized she'd scare Shion and I enough at this point, smiled soothingly. Then she turned on her heel, raised the lantern, and began to walk again. But she didn't even get to crucifixion, which was the nastiest of the ways to go. If Takano-san left us here, we'd get even further away from the light. Shion and I, no matter how scared we were, we were forced to follow Takano along the field trip through the ritual storehouse. Yeah... There's a difference between executing someone, like, quickly because they've murdered someone, and, like, ex giving them an excruciatingly long, torturous death. Like, that's, even if you're pro-death penalty, like, you gotta be against that. Like, come on. Just, just deal with the trash, uh, as quickly as possible, I would say. <laughs> Let's get out of the storehouse. No, we're still here. Well, first she went here because she wanted to see the tools, but then she spent the entire time telling us gruesome stories. She says that, raising the lantern high in the center of the storehouse. The dim lighting didn't change, but for some reason it felt like I was able to see all of those horrible tools at once. She unstammered while grabbing the nape of my neck. <laughs> I couldn't tell because it was so dark, but there were a lot more tools hanging from the ceiling as well. They all looked like they were made of iron bars, but then I figured it out. Cages. For cages, they were very small. Cramped cages for just one, like a casket. If you got locked up in there, no, you wouldn't get locked up inside it. It was another tool meant for restraining people, where the iron bars would squeeze you tightly. All the... So many big and large things of all shapes were hanging down. Takano's mention of the execution by grilling crosses my mind. We weren't just surrounded on all sides by these terrifying instruments. Things crowding the ceiling were even hanging over our heads. Also, folks, have we forgotten that there's a nasty, like, fish gut smell in here? There's definitely a dead body in here somewhere. Shion desperately pointed to one of the many human-sized bird cages hanging from the ceiling, but I couldn't tell which one she meant. Being that dark, there wasn't any way you could tell if something was in there in the first place. Liar. Are people ever just seeing things? Shion didn't seem convinced, but without a means to confirm it for ourselves, we couldn't do much but wonder. I'm not convinced this isn't just talking those version of a haunted house. It's got nothing to do with believing in them. Now that I've been shown the real thing like this, there's no possible way to deny it. Even the nations of Europe, with all their beautiful landscapes and legends, were like a maelstrom during the terrible witch hunts in the Dark Ages. It's well known that the era gave birth to countless gruesome forms of torture and execution. Japan was the same way. Pretty much every country was that way. Didn't it have its own era of a hellscape-like torturous feasts because of religious suppression and things of that nature? Hinamizawa itself had such a period. It had that much history behind it. Even in Europe, land of the witch hunts, that was all far in the past. No more than a series of historical events. And in this age, nothing that abnormal would ever happen. Oh, you say that, but that's actually not that's true. <laughs> that must apply to Hinamizawa as well. そういうものなんだと解釈します。本当に雛見沢でこういう恐ろしいことがあったのだとしても、それは大昔の出来事なんです。今暮らしている雛見沢の人々とは何の関係もないことです。前原君は本当に雛見沢が好きなのね。<
It didn't sound like she was making fun of me. Takano gave me a light smile. Demo, Takano san wa sono fushu ga jitsu wa gendai ni mo nokotte irun janai ka to omotte kenkyu o shite irun desu. So de shita yo ne? Shion suggested something that made my harp bleed into my throat. My harp! Are you telling me that also those horrible things are still going on even today? There's more? How am I going to split this up into multiple vods? Oh, I wouldn't want that, creepy lady. She unflashed a devilish smile as if reveling in the immorality of it. Uh, no, she didn't. She's definitely frowning. Okay, I believe you. You're doing a really good job of trying to make me think that you're responsible for these murders. Takano said that, bringing her face right up close to ours. As if to say that she had the choice that she'd rather suffer the curse. That was what she seemed to be implying. Takano took a fairly worn notebook out of her paper bag, then began to flip through its pages. There were all sorts of references and newspaper clippings attached to them, and it had all matter of things written inside. The letters were very small and bunched together, so I couldn't tell at a glance what it was all about. A photocopy for a, of a page from some book was slid into the notebook, and it too was written in small, tight lettering. Like the other pages, I couldn't tell what it was just by glancing at it. What I'm curious about is how much longer Chapter 2 is going to be, because I was hoping I would finish it um, next stream, but that actually might not happen, because we're still on with the festival. And in, at least in Chapter 1, there is a huge amount of the chapter after the festival. Like half of it. Uh-oh. An old newspaper clipping attached to the page spoke of something that was no mere rumor or fairy tale. Never before has there been a corpse treated with such cruelty and inhumanity. Could it be the work of a demon? Being a copy of a copy, it was very hard to make out, but it was more than enough to make me feel strangely tense. Yep, this is her notebook. Near the end of the Meiji area, in old Onigafuchi village, a mangled corpse was discovered. The identity of the corpse was unknown. It wasn't even in a state where it could be identified in the first place. It was missing a head, and each limb was separated from the body. Skin had been peeled off the entire body, and there were markings that implied terrible torture in every place imaginable. Not only that, but the belly had been cut open by a sharp knife, with the entrails completely dragged out. The police immediately began an investigation, but since they couldn't even determine the identity of the victim, much less the criminal, finding answers was extremely difficult. Yeah. I'm. I think once we get to the end of her ghost stories, I will be calling it for the night. And if I have to do an extra stream after next week, then fine. I just kind of want to finish chapter two in October. I couldn't imagine such a strange sight, even if I tried. This is the first time I was ever thankful for my lack of imagination. Flay flaying is one of the worst ways of going, too. Why are you saying all this of a smile?
I think you're creeping me the F out and I'm leaving. She spoke in a way intended to make me imagine even more vicious fiends. As my brain was already far over capacity, however, there was no way I could imagine anything more brutal. Then, when I get broke my gaze from Takano's, those strangely shaped weird tools were all around us. I wonder if you could faithfully reproduce the mutilated corpse discovered at the end of the Meiji era with the tools found in this place. I want to deny it. I don't want to admit that something so terrible could have happened at all. Even so, they were so strange, so terrifying. These tools, and as if they had seen through my attempt to escape from them, they did nothing but ridicule me silently. This corpse, at a glance, appeared to have been brutally killed after a period of torture. In actuality, however, it was the pitiful sacrificial remains of the man-eater's terrifying feast. The corpse was just leftovers. It was so fantastic, so strange, that it didn't feel real. Was this an extension of the Legends too? It happened in the Meiji era, though, which is too recent to be called a legend. Also, there's a newspaper clipping right here suggesting it. It's true. No, really. But... Canned flesh? Takano immediately stopped talking as if I have worried about Shion. Shion briefly looked somewhat angry, but that expression soon disappeared. Just then, there was a huge creaking noise. Everyone whipped around to look. It was Tomatake who had opened the door slightly. <laughs> hey, guys, you've been in there for like three hours, and everybody that went home. That's pretty recent, yeah. Even so, the idea that like crazy things like that happened a hundred years ago. It, it makes you, it puts things into perspective. It's not just like, oh, well, people were really different back then. So they really weren't. Human nature never changes. No wonder this, no wonder this guy wanted to see, this guy is super based. He's like, I don't really want to look at torture devices, but my girlfriend is weird like this. You can go in. Takano held her stomach and had to muffle her laughter, as if she wanted to make a comment about his masculinity. He don't have to prove his masculinity to anybody. Look at that bod. Hey, listen, dude, I think you need to break up with your girlfriend. She's no good. I'd really rather you not mention me in a place like this. That's taboo! Bruh! Do not let her anywhere near those tools. Takano took a camera out of her paper bag and began to snap photographs. <laughs> Rika literally danced for hours. This was not one of those Fire Emblem dances where you do it and then they can move again. No, this is like... no, My gosh, she had to, she had to use the hoe for like two hours and she can barely lift the fiend? Oh, I feel bad for her. Except not really, because she made a very creepy advance on us. Get 
KG, have you ever wondered why I only have three fingers on my left hand? Oh, we're not talking about that! I do feel a bit of hesitation at leaving Takano by herself in this darkness. No, she's good. When I thought about it, though, I realized that whatever kinds of evil spirits and ghosts lurked in the darkness, none of them could hold a candle to how scary she was. Even if a phantasm were to appear, she'd be overjoyed and flash her camera at it. It seemed like Shiona shared my somewhat rude mental images. No, it's not rude! 100% accurate. She exchan we exchanged glances and smiled painfully. We left Takano there, bathed in the strobe of camera flashes, and decided to go leave the ritual storehouse. Don't go playing that happy music on me now. Everyone at the festival seemed to have gone to the stream, so their voices were very distant. The voices of the bugs, on the other hand, were clear, lending an empty feeling of isolation to the place. Listen, Tomotake, your girlfriend's weird. Tomotake gave us a somewhat mischievous grin. He should have been able to tell by looking at how pale our faces were. <laughs> Tomotake laughed so delightfully that it wiped away our dark feelings. Shion <laughs> spoke like she wasn't scared at all. She really had been quite afraid, but seeing as how I was in a way worse state than her, I didn't have much room to talk. As Tomotake grins candidly in my mind, exhausted and locked up by nervousness, began to calm itself. Er, that was a weird sentence. Not a child, just a psychopath. Oh, she definitely was. Both Shion and I laughed and left that as our answer. I'd be more worried that she takes them and actually uses them. Right, that's quite possible. She is alone in there right now. She might pill for something small and easily concealed, hiding it in her pocket. <laughs> Shion said what I was thinking. Sorry, I broke everything. How many pictures were you taking? <laughs> I want to borrow your camera. She's taking selfies in front of all these like creepy torture devices and posting them to her Instagram. Takano suddenly appeared while we were talking about her, taking everyone by surprise. Tomotake smoothly grinned and responded as if nothing had happened. He's pretty mature. He is an adult. <laughs> <laughs> I spent, used all my film taking photos of the Sonozaki twins. Tomotake scratched his head apologetically. Without film, we're done here. Taka, uh, Takano seemed to have given up because of that, too. We checked carefully to make sure we hadn't left anything inside, and then closed the door and turned the heavy padlock that we'd left beside it. Takano-san? Kerclack! Tomatake set the padlock back the way it was before. Shaggy is still playing Resident Evil. From a cursory glance, it didn't look like thieves had snuck in at all. What do you mean? We helped sell a bunch of food. Tomotage spoke brightly, urging us all on, setting Cotton afloat down the stream. I shake my head a few times, driving away my dismal thoughts as to the double meaning. Takano, looking a little let down, kept turning back to glance at the ritual storehouse. I left my apricot fruit lever in there. Shh! <laughs> Wow, she's truly indomitable. Her curiosity really is something else. Still interested in all this, through and through. We descended the stone stairs and all the people crowding the stream came into view. 
Near the bottom of the stairs, we could clearly see people receiving cotton that had been cut out for them, then wishing upon the cotton and setting it afloat down the stream. The festival was already over. For her the gram, Takano, with an impish expression, brought her head to Tomotake's shoulder. Despite his age, he looked embarrassed. I felt an honest respect for Tomotake, man to man, for dating such a handful of a woman. He's like, well, she is hot. <laughs> if we go with him, can we stop him from getting his throat, throat clawed out? If he dies again, it's 100% Takano. <laughs> Shion waved her hand to them with an expression just as impish as Takano's. Tomotake-san, on his part, seemed to want us to come, but whatever. He knows! He knows what's going to happen. Shion gave a big stretch and sat down on the stone steps. <laughs> Yeah, if we were to go now, we'd barely slip into the end of the cotton drifting ceremony. Why didn't we just watch Rika? Would have been a nicer evening. They probably went home. Then Shion suddenly got a playful look on her face, then put her index finger to her lips as if telling me to keep this a secret. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, DX. <laughs> keep tonight a secret. Don't say things like that are, that are so embarrassing. They're totally going to think we were making out with her. The loosening threads of tension began taut again. Shion, however, burst out laughing. Gotta get an alibi. Then she said that her vague expression explained that there are a lot of oddities in a relationship between twins. Shion stood up and brushed the dust off her backside. After watching her do so, I returned my eyes to the final ceremony of the Watanagashi festival below me. I was giving her a blank expression, so Shion stared hard at me. I stared hard at her, too. Sorry,ケイちゃん。あれ、気にならなかったんですか? When all said and done, it was like we were speaking two different languages. Neither of us was giving any ground, and both of us were staring at the other in disbelief. We were answering questions with more questions, with no sign of an actual conversation in sight. Baffled, I held in the urge to shout at her, and asked politely one more time. 
Shion nodded silently. That's probably just Rika using the hoe. I don't remember hearing that. Uh oh, she's going crazy. Shion, as if she didn't understand my plain and simple answer, pressed me fervor, her expression serious. I have no clue what she's talking about. But if it has Shion acting so like this. Whatever it was, it gave me the creeps and sent a chill down my spine. さっき最後で heard a banging sound like a child jumping on distant floorboards. Wait, Tomotake said the same thing. I didn't hear anything at all. In fact, it was so utterly silent in there that my own heartbeat was almost deafening. Yeah, Keiichi was hearing weird noises in Chapter 1, wasn't he? Hmm...なんだか、高野さんの怖い話に合わせて音を立ててるようで、私、ずっと薄気味悪かったんですから。well, this is a harbinger of doom. The chill rose from my spine to the back of my head. My blood turned cold as it crawled up my body. Was it when it reached my head, my mind froze over. Shio, I think so. Shion's eyes were beginning to tell me that, <laughs> begging me to tell her that I heard it. I had no doubt, however, that my own eyes suggested something entirely different, a you've got to be kidding look. In that storehouse, we were surrounded by brutal ritual tools that looked like they were from another planet, listening to terrifying old stories. The whole time, Shion had been hearing a sound that we couldn't hear by herself. Should that make Shion, who heard it, tremble, or should it make me, who didn't hear it, tremble? I didn't know the answer to that at the time. For now, Shion seemed to have made that decision before I did. Uh, <laughs> I don't believe that's a joke. No. Shion laughed, saying how easily scared I was, and clapped me on the back. I don't believe that. Her smile seemed somehow artificial, and it actually made me feel worse. Then, after leaving me with two or three generic diplomatic goodbye phrases, she left, almost like she was running away. All I could do was look after her, my mouth agape. At the end of the day, I didn't have a clue what was going on. Shion laughed it off and said she had been lying, but she couldn't possibly have been lying. Of course not. And now that I think back, Tomatake-san said the same thing, didn't he? He did! Tomotake-san, the most neutral party president at the time, had said that he'd heard something. Then, that noise. It was real. The banging sounds. Sounds as though a child was jumping up and down on some kind of floorboards far away. Oyoshiro-sama's curse, which happens every year, might happen again tonight. The most plausible victim candidates were Takano, Tomotake, Shion, and me. The bustling of the people sounded further away than I would have liked, and the sounds of the insects sounded too close for comfort. I'm near so much human warmth, and yet I can't ever go back there again. That was the ominous idea that sprouted in my mind. Then all of a sudden, I was pounced on from behind, causing my heart to lurch. Hi, Rika. I saw the whole thing. It was great. Really alone, though. It was Rika. When I turned around, Mion and Rena were there, too. Maybe Satoko. Maybe Satoko was jumping and we just didn't notice. No, I don't think so. I listened to Mion's happy declaration with a little bit of a guilt. 
僕の演舞はちゃんと応援してくれましたですかあ、ああちゃんと見てたぜ<笑>最後までちゃんと頑張ったなミスもなかったし<笑> She's like, how could you even know that? This is your first time watching it そうだよリカちゃんあんなのはミスのうちに入らないよ I tensed up as I realized I'd made a mistake of my own. Uh oh, that's not good. Mion, what have I told you about my personal space? Mion slapped a hand on my shoulder a little roughly. A gross sweat broke out over my whole body. You haven't yet, right? Is that what I could hear her saying? Without the courage to tell any more lies, I lifelessly shook my head. そうなのケイチくん。早く行かないと終わっちゃうよ<笑> I, would not, I would not be surprised. Rika is probably exhausted right now. 終わっちゃうよご,ごめん。初めてのお祭りだからさ。よくルールがわからなくて。そうだったね。ごめん。Mio took my hand and we started walking down the stone steps. ねえケイちゃん。なんだよ。Uh, why do you ask? <laughs> I, no, I, we, we made out. <laughs> my heart skipped another beat. Maybe Mion could sense my surprise for my hand. Don't lie. We all know Keiichi, as soon as he started lying, everyone went crazy. ミオンだったのかもしれないしそんなに間違えないでしょ服装だって違うんだからえあ She changed and did her hair ミオン's momentary silence was like a death grip upon me しょうがないなあシオンはまああいつのことだから放っておいても大丈夫かなミオン's expression returned to her former usual smile, and we continued down the stone steps, for her firmly pulling my hand along. Oh my gosh, we finally, finally get the break. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're, you're playing Higarashi when they cry. Yuck, yuck, yuck. How many tips are we going to get? New tips unlock scrapbook four, five, and after the festival. All right, sweet. Plumbing the depths. Discover what's in the storehouse. Cool. All right. We'll read the tips and we'll end the stream. Because it's getting late. Watanagashi. The rite of Watanagashi is performed during the uh, village festival every June, even now. But reading back on its origins turns up a seriously sanguine ceremony. Originally, Watanagashi would happen at certain intervals. And after receiving Oyashira-sama's trust, they chose a sacrifice. Then the entire village would kidnap, demon away the person, and ceremonially dissect and devour them in a feast. The rules that determine the intervals are shrouded in mystery. This is because the ceremonies occurred extremely irregularly. There's a theory that it was determined based on astrological fortune telling, but it isn't too convincing. The residents of ancient Onigafuchi village firmly believe that they were half man, half demon transcendents, and that they were more valuable than humans were, and they forced people within and without to accept that. Perhaps the act of kidnapping and eating people was done to prove that they were higher up on the food chain. This is just a hypothesis, but maybe the rite of Watanagashi was a political event for the purpose of being an outlet for, or outright diverting the attention of, the villagers of the isolated Onigafuchi village. In any case, any of their complaints or dissatisfactions grew serious. If that was the main reason these ceremonies were held, then it's easy to explain how erratic they were. Thanks, Takano. Your notes are weird, and so are you. Yeah, it definitely sounded like she was going to beat up the Shion. From scrapbook number five. The alleged importance of the implements. I can't find anything that gives a concrete description of what the ritual implements were like. They were, however, real, and there definitely existed a multitude of different kinds. One source states that the implements used in the Watanagashi rite alone numbered 200. The obvious question, then, is why they required such a myriad of them. 
The right of Watanagashi was to kidnap people through the demonine away, dissect them, and eat them. I believe the tools were for dissection and restraining, but 200 of them is far too many. Generally, tools evolve in such a way as to reach a solution for a certain problem. Once you've reached the ultimate goal, that is, attained a certain level of efficiency, the tool's evolution normally stops there. Regardless, why would they have created so many different kinds? One of the cultural elements responsible for diversification over time is that of entertainment. Tools used for entertainment would evolve over time and branch out. Unlike normal tools, reaching the ultimate goal would be more of a dead end, and in searching for the next goal, that would split into many different subtypes. So then, perhaps it's not a stretch to suggest that these 200-plus implements had some entertainment value. This is just a hypothesis, of course, but maybe the human dissection process was viewed as a type of entertainment. The free families of old would develop the one new implement, dissection tool, after another, and each one was very novel and attracted spectators to keep them from growing bored. It's not unimaginable. All of them has have to be enshrined within that storehouse. There isn't much longer until the night of Watanagashi. Though its original intent has been lost, I will reveal the secrets of the traditional ceremonial night within this ritual storehouse. I can't restrain my excitement. Watanagashi cannot come soon enough. Alright, Takano, you're super weird. And the fact that you're obsessed with the and gleeful about these torture devices in history is pretty messed up. Oh, she's just a history buff. She could be a history buff about anything, but she's a history buff about torture. Oh, we're going back to Uishi, the police uh, guy. Maybe we'll get to hear who died. Late that night, tensions in the police station were strained. In the silence, many of the staff members' eyes shifted back and forth between the clock and their telephones, counting the seconds in that stifled atmosphere. Kumagaya-kun burst in with a young guy trailing behind him. Oh, autopsy! So someone did die. Burned! That's different! It's not claw out. Well, if they're seriously burned, then yeah, it can be difficult to identify the body, especially if DNA testing did not exist back then. Okay, it's a different def uh, method this time. He spoke in sportive tones, but the meaning behind those words was heavy. The staff gave a collective sigh. Oh, Lord. I would not want to perform the autopsy on that one. Cooked with no possessions, then discarded outside the prefecture. At worst, it would have taken a week for the body to be identified. The fact that they had sniffed it out tonight was huge. Wait, did this happen in Okinomiya? I'm gonna need a smoke. The young guy answered an affirmation and darted out into the hallway. Exactly. They want to be found. Okay. You know. Okay. Being strangled to death is not nearly as bad as being fully cooked in an oil drum. つまり、今年は景色は初めからなかったってことですか景色がないってよりは、これはそれとは全く別のものでしょうね。景色どころか、主張しているようにすら感じられますよ。つまり、見せしめの意味があるってことですか。He folded his arms and then heaved a long and heavy sigh. それを市内でやってくれりゃ、その線もあるんですがね。こんな遠くまで運んでやっちゃったら、下手したらわかんないでしょう。見せしめにするなら、ひなみざの近くでやるべきなんですよ。殺したことを主張したいのに、場所は演
A telephone ring cut through the heavy silence. A staff member nearby snatched up the receiver. Oh, so they found a match. いやこんな毛型前に歯医者さんには申し訳ないな。熊ちゃん、了解っす。課長です。夜分お疲れ様です。おいさん、遅くなって申し訳ない。状況は。うーん、やっと面白くなってきたってとこ。Now <笑> Well, they identified the body. But we'll have to figure out who that body is next week. Sorry, folks. But I'm tired. And I have work tomorrow. So, that's just how it's going to be. Let's make that nice little save. End of chapter 7.